Welcome to this video on Objective 2.2, Understanding Common Threat Vectors and Attack Surfaces. In today's digital landscape, cyber threats are constantly evolving, making it crucial to know where and how these attacks might occur. In this video, we'll dive into the most common threat vectors like phishing, malware, and social engineering, and explore the various attack surfaces that could be exploited, from your network infrastructure to the software applications you use every day. By the end of this video, you'll have a clear understanding of how these threats operate and how to better protect your systems against them. Let's get started. Question 1 which is the use to describe the cyber threat involving the use of SMS messages to trick recipients into downloading malicious software or divulging personal information. A. Spear phishing. B. Spam. C. Smishing. D. Malware. The answer is C. Smishing. Smishing, which is a combination of SMS and phishing, is a type of attack that involves using SMS messages to trick recipients into actions like downloading malicious software or providing personal information. Question 2. Which of the following methods is described as a less secure form of strong authentication that is vulnerable to on-path attacks and sends a question to the user's phone via SMS to ask if the authorization attempt is approved? A. Email authentication. B. SMS OTP. C. SMS challenge response. D. IM authentication. The answer is C. SMS challenge response. With SMS challenge response, a question is sent to the user's phone via SMS asking if the authorization attempt is approved. If the user texts back yes, authorization is completed, and if the user texts back no, authentication fails. It is a less secure form of strong authentication that is vulnerable to on-path attacks. Question 3. What is one of the methods attackers can use to spread malware through digital images? A. Deleting metadata. B. Embedding destructive code within an image. C. Increasing image resolution. D. Compressing the image. The answer is B. Embedding destructive code within an image. Attackers can embed destructive code within an image to spread malware. When the image is open, the hidden code may be executed, leading to system compromise. Question 4. Which security approach requires installation on individual client devices and can provide more granular control and customization, but may be more resource intensive? A. Agentless security. B. Client based security. C. Unsupported security. D. Patched security. The answer is B, client-based security. Client-based security requires that software and agent be installed on the client device itself to actively monitor and protect against malicious activities. It can provide more granular control and customization, but may be more resource intensive. Question five, what does the term unsupported systems and applications refer to? A, systems with extensive technical support. B, systems that have reached end of life EOL and no longer receive regular updates. C, systems supported by multiple vendors. D, systems that are newly launched. The answer is B, systems that have reached end of life EOL and no longer receive regular updates, unsupported systems and applications or software tools or platforms that do not receive regular updates, security patches, or technical support, often because they have reached their official end of life EOL. Without updates, these systems become prime targets for cyber criminals and pose significant security risks. Question 6. Which of the following wireless network security protocols is considered outdated and susceptible to exploitation if used in modern networks? A. WPA3, B. WEP, C. WPA2, D. WPA2 Enterprise. The answer is B. WEP, WEP, Wired Equivalent Privacy, is considered outdated and susceptible to exploitation due to its encryption and vulnerabilities. Question 7. What technique involves scanning a list of telephone numbers and dialing them to search for computer systems and fax machines, sifting out phone numbers associated with voice lines, A. Vishing, B. Smishing, C. War dialing, D. Type of squatting? The answer is C. War dialing. War dialing involves scanning a list of telephone numbers and dialing them in search on computer systems and fax machines, filtering out numbers associated with voice lines. Question 8. 
which approach is critical in the context of supply chain cybersecurity for identifying and addressing security gaps in vendors? A. Regular product quality assessment. B. Continuous monitoring and vendor risk management. C. Strictly focusing on the cost efficiency on vendors. D. Emphasizing only raw material quality. The answer is B, continuous monitoring and vendor risk management. Continuous monitoring and vendor risk management, including regular security assessments and contractual obligations, help in identifying and addressing security gaps in vendors. Question 9. What term refers to phasing attacks accomplished through telephone conversations, where attackers might impersonate legitimate institutions to steal sensitive information? A, war dialing. B, type of squatting. C, vishing. D, smishing. The answer is C. Vishing. Vishing or voice phishing refers to phishing attacks accomplished by telephone conversations that are often used to steal sensitive information. Question 10. In which social engineering technique does an attacker register a domain that is common typo of a legitimate site to host malware or impersonate the real website and leverage human error when typing a URL? A. Smishing. B. War dialing. C. Type of squatting. D. Vishing. The answer is C, type of squatting. Type of squatting leverages human error when typing a URL. An attacker registers a domain that is a common typo of a legitimate site to host malware or impersonate the real website. Victims who type in the wrong URL are subject to this attack. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful as you prepare for your CompTIA Security Plus exam. Remember, the passing score for the Security Plus exam is 750 on a scale of 100 900, so keep that in mind as you study. If you have any questions, comments, or tips of your own, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any future updates. Good luck on your exam, and see you next time.